As a child, I noticed that some kids seemed to be different from others. Like, some were taller and some were shorter, some were stronger and others were weaker. A few were smarter and <laughs> a few or a couple were dumber. No matter what their differences, though, they always seemed to dislike the kids that were unlike them. The stronger bullied the weaker and the weaker despised the stronger and the skinny mocked the fatter and so on and so on. I'm assuming you get my point. but. What I never really understood was, why would one seem to favor another trait over another? The ones with poor coordination envied those who could play sports, yet they got along with those who did well in school. The dumb ones found solace among those who were bad at sport because they simply were singled out for not having any brains. These prejudices seemed to be almost natural and ingrained to their minds at birth. Humans hated other humans simply because of traits that they were unlike or opposite to their own. But as for me, I love my flaws. As I got a bit older, around the time when I was, say, 17, I had a revelation. I finally understood why people hated each other, and it, it was simply because they could not come to appreciate the beauty of their own damn flaws. All I had to do was show them that they're all beautifully imperfect. And from then on, it became my mission to sculpt the world around me, to do my part to make it a, well, better place. I thought it'd be best to start with my own family, and a fairly normal family structure, at least by today's standards. My father was never quite around, although I wasn't quite sure why. My mother raised me, my teenage brother, and my little sister pretty much all by herself. I helped her when I was old enough. My brother was only a year younger than I was, so he was kind of in that phase where he didn't want any involvement with family whatsoever. And I was understanding about it too, because I too also experienced that feeling many times. My sister, however, was much younger than I was, and since my mom was always working, it was up to me to look after her. I kind of formed a special bond with my little sister. I loved her so much, she was just this cute little ball of adorable joy. So I started my crusade by trying to explain the importance of flaws to my older, my younger brother. He blew me off as I suspected he would, and when I talked to my mother, she was so exhausted she could barely make it to her bed. I didn't think my sister would comprehend what I was saying since she was so young. That's when I decided that I needed to teach them by force. I went to my mom's room at about 3 in the morning. I figured that she would have had about 4 hours of sleep by now, and she'd probably understand me now, right? I took the piece of glass out and cut her exposed shoulder up to her neckline, and this woke her up in alarm as she thrashed about and the glass escaped my grip. This thing seemed a bit hazy as I tried to look back, but she stopped thrashing, so I knew she must have understood. I remember turning, returning to her bedside and getting the glass back. It must have been shattered or something because all I could find was a little corner of it, which I stuck in my mother's throat. Glass is not uncommon, so I, that's what I thought to myself. Since she <laughs> seemed to want it so much, I'll just let her keep it. <sighs> Leaving her room, I went to the kitchen to acquire a knife then proceed to the garage and grab a large rope. Seeing my mom's reaction, I knew that I must take measures to keep my brother restrained. I was able to tie the rope around his right arm and then around his wrist area, but then he awoke when I tightened it. He swung at me in his stupor but then fell off the bed, taking the rope with him. When he didn't get up, I checked on him to only find that the rope was tied around his neck and not about his wrist. Funny, I, I could have sworn I put it around his wrist. No matter. I thought as I, steady, <laughs> as I steadied my resolve, I pulled him back up to the bed and tied the other rope around his bed post for security. Not being one to waste the opportunity when it presented itself, I jumped on a chance to give him flaws that would shine. He made a few markings around his torso and one around his upper ribs, one around his lower abdomen and one around the center of his chest on an angle to his collarbone. I've also marked the sides of his arms, and then left him one last flaw at the base of his neck, below the area that I covered with his ropes. <laughs> Perfect! I thought to myself, perhaps my mom and my brother could bond over the flaws that I gave them. But I can't leave my sister out, of course. 
I went to her room, and I was surprised to find her awake sitting on her bed. What was all that noise? She asked. Oh, <laughs> it was me helping mom and brother become closer, I replied. She responded with, How so? Well, I gave them markings to give them something in common. What kind of mark? Well, at that point, I had to stop and think for a moment. How does one explain this to a child? Pulling a uh, blank on how to sugarcoat it, I just decided to take the chance to be honest and hope that she could get it. I gave them both markings so they can um, understand uh, their flaws. Flaws? She said. Yes, uh, flaws. You know, the things that make us special. You can give those to people? <laughs> yes, and you're the, quite the smarty one, aren't you? Mom always told me I was. <laughs> and she was right. My sister noticed that I had a knife in my hand. What's that for? She asked. I smiled as I replied. I used to give these uh, flaws to our brother. She was much smarter than I thought she was. Perhaps she could understand after all. Can I try to give special flaws? Her eagerness to learn and explore made me smile. Oh, of course you can. I said as I handed her the knife. How, how do I do it? It's easy. Just, just press the silver part onto the skin and then pull. Can I uh, try it on you? This was a perfect moment for me. The one person who understood was the one person who I cared for the most. <laughs> of course you can, I told her. I was really getting caught up in the moment. She first pressed onto my shoulder and then pulled. I barely felt a thing. I was just too ecstatic. Too much adrenaline was running through my veins to notice any kind of pain. See, I said, you just gave me special flaws. At that moment, I was so proud of her. When she asked to give another, I allowed her to. She pressed the blade against my back and pulled. I felt almost nothing. I loved my sister so dearly, and I was just so happy to show her the beauty of flaws. Can I, uh, ha can I make one more? Please? I couldn't say no to someone so adorable and so close to me. Oh, yes, you can. You make me... So special. She pulled a blade onto my, on the left side of my throat and then pulled it back. I didn't feel a thing that time. I mean, after that, things got very blurry. I felt oh so very tired. I was just having trouble staying awake. I, I, I just have to lie down for a moment. I looked up at my sister and smiled. Things became more faded and dark. Looking back, I, I still don't quite understand my logic on why I did what I did. I guess it's just... I, I guess it's just... I, I guess it's just one of my flaws. <laughs>